Welcome to No Man's Land, a modded State of Decay 2 difficulty that makes Lethal Zone look like child's play. But today is the day things change forever. Today is the day everyone dies. Juggernaut's in the base, ladies and gentlemen. No! Hastings, get the f up! No, no, no! Not like this! Not like this! Things immediately get off to a terrible start, as a triple bloater pack is wandering past my base while I have the high toxicity bloater curveball active. Luckily, I've created a shit ton of mollies in my tasting room. You gotta love the versatility of this facility. Before the apocalypse, that would have been used by rich tourists visiting the region looking to sample the finest wine or whiskey Mega Valley has to offer. These days, it's used by me, pouring petroleum into glass bottles to burn the undead, and occasionally the living, but usually my friends. And this encounter certainly left its mark on the team. With the exception of Rachel, lazy bitch, and learning from my previous mistake, I've decided to start by clearing out this siege site, moving on to these infestations, before finally starting our assault on these two play cards. Oh my god, there's four juggernauts right there. Oh my god, no, there's five juggernauts right there. So I get in my car and start the engine, just as three of the fuckers start charging me. But thanks to my world-class reversing skills, I managed to escape with no issue. I'm sure we'll never be hearing from those juggernauts ever again. I can clear out the siege site with no issue, simply headshotting the screamer. But just as I'm trying to make my escape, I then get jumped by a four pack of blood ferals. Yes, four of the bastards trying to munch on my thick cheeks. Thankfully, I've got enough paracetamol and caffeine to keep me going, but that plague bar's creeped up very quickly. No, 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 no! You gotta close the door with you on the other side of it, you prick! Then, with the four ferals hot on my tail, I run back to the passenger side of my vehicle and get in. That might be the smartest thing I've ever done in my life. I can then make my escape before the ferals rip me out or destroy the vehicle. Holy shit, I thought that might have been the end then. I then decide to ignore my earlier plan of tackling the infestations and just crack on straight to the play cards. Although admittedly I should have parked my car more strategically. That is some very dark smoke and almost certainly not enough fuel to get home. But before we can even think about escape and we've got a victory to claim. That is until the inevitable happens. Oh uh, no my shaft is yellow. It's not a shaft it's fine. I don't know what you'd call it, but after dodging my way around the room for five, I drop out and drop a terrible molly. Yep, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, Hastings is on fire. Although in all honesty, that molly throw wasn't as bad as I first thought, as he's done a fantastic job of clearing the undead. Did I just hear feral? Yes, I did. And it turns out that feral is actually a bit of a knobhead. Okay, I am almost infected. And not wanting to waste my final energy drink, I retreat to the car and kill the crackhead from there, before charging back into the belly of the beast, and it seems Hastings is really enjoying herself. Hi! Yeah, yeah, I know you do, you psycho. My torch then glitches out, giving the zombies a chance for a dirty blow. A dirty blow where afterwards I have to inject myself with special medicine? Can't relate. Anyway, Hastings escapes with her life, but only a third of her eyebrows. But what makes things even worse is we're now completely out of stamina items, and I haven't even made a dent in this play cart. So I go another round of battering stranger sacks before dipping out as my stamina gets too low. But don't worry, before I do, I drop yet another Molotov. I then retreat to safety to allow my stamina to regain and I start to come up with the foundations of a groundbreaking new plan. With another heart being so close to this one and there being a ridiculous amount of zombies surrounding me, I decide to run to the other heart thanks to Hastings' impressive cardiovascular. This should help spread out the undead and hopefully result in me getting infected less often. So I run in and get four full power heavy hits on it before the undead catch up to me, just another 10 to go before I complete the phase. Unfortunately, a feral has also followed me so I lead it outside to appropriately deal with it. Being a speedy Gal, we can temporarily lose the pursuers before getting several more hits in. Although to save time, these weren't full power hits. The undead then catch me, so I set them on fire before retreating. Come on, spread the flames, spread the flames, baby. Alright, uh, that was a terrible molly chat. That was terrible molly. It's so uncharacteristically unlike me to waste molotovs. Another crackhead fancy sip in my spinal fluid, so I once again lead it outside, but the hordes from the previous heart have finally caught up to me. We then have a little back and forth before I down the bastard, but it turns out he wasn't alone and brought his two older brothers. I need something to climb onto. Can they climb onto the crate? I don't know. We're about to find out. But to be honest, that's only if we get there. Oh shit, this this is not good, chat. Yep, this is not good, this is not good, this is not good! Hastings manages to scramble away from the now three blood ferals with next to fuck all health remaining. Please say they can't climb up onto these. Please say they can't. For now, it seems we're safe. Although still low on health and I've just taken my last painkiller. Thankfully, the one thing I do have in abundance is ammunition. Although it turns out that single feral, which turned into a double, which turned into a triple, is now a four pack. And I thought inflation in real life was bad enough. I can then hop down and make a break for it. And I decide now is probably the time to retreat. 
no stamina items, no healables, no play cure, also pretty much no fuel. But unbelievably, I have just enough to get me back home. Yeah, look at that chat. That is that couldn't have been more perfectly timed if I wanted to. With Hastings back home, I decide she's earned a rest, but Rachel disagrees. Sure, any of this is working out the way we hoped. All right, love, fucking don't be a prick, is it? I can then swap to Stuart, who's in a considerably better condition. We can then head out in the middle of the night to do some looting, and I've only got two things on my mind: toolkits and building materials. But first, I gotta deal with another quad pack of crackheads, and thankfully, I've still got landmine set on my most recent outpost. But even so, things definitely could have gone smoother. Oh, I'm on fire! Shit in hell! My looting quest then takes me to a nearby barn, and once Stuart has showed off her very impressive fighting skills, she finds precisely fuck all. So I try moving to the fuel pumps next door, but have to fight off another horde of purple-eyed bastards. These zombies have terrible eyesight, but cracking hearing. Not great when you're a loud lass like we are. I'm rewarded for my efforts with some alcohol and a couple of jerry cans. Oh, bloody Nora. It's another horde. Look at the size of that fucker. So it's time to get out of here before they cause an even bigger nuisance. But on my way to raid someone shared, I notice a neutral enclave and decide to see if they have anything worth buying. Even though they ate me because I didn't get a cure, you know, maybe one of their people might have died or something. God, what a bunch of drama queens, isn't it? Unfortunately, they don't have any toolkits, but they do have three sacks of building materials. Well, I'll be taking them off your hands, thank you very much. Then leaving the heavily damaged car behind, I run to the earlier mentioned shed and find more building materials, and poly, and some fireworks. You never know. You never know when a firework could come in handy. Now we head back to that enclave. I got snacks. I got eight snacks. Jesus Christ. What a hungry girl. We then kinda lead a horde back to the neutrals, and I take a breather on my pickup. Can you stop shooting my car? If this car blows up and I'm trapped here, I'm threatening this enclave and murdering them all. Every single one of them. While they deal with the problem I caused, I set sights onto my next destination. Then it's time to leave. I guess I'll see you later, boys. Although I do arrive rather loud at my next destination. What can I say? I've got no regard for fence maintenance. So I get into a little fight before deciding that burning them alive is definitely the more efficient way. But sadly, there are some things you can't burn alive. Mother fucking crackheads. With that gunshot being loud, we gotta move quick. So I quickly grab the sack of building materials from the shed and get the hell out. But in that process, I may have caused a smidge too much damage to my pickup. Ah, fuck it. I'm sure driving a car that's partially on fire won't cause any issues. I then head back and unload all of my spoils, then start upgrading our command center to level 3. That additional outpost will certainly help towards my master plan. I also notice we're getting low on food, so I enact rationing to sort out that issue. Yes, we're gonna take a hit on the morale, but, you know, it is what it is. I then take over his bootleg and head out to do some more looting. Extremely bloody carefully, may I add. Starting where we were at previously with the ultimate numpties. What the bloody hell's going on out here? So after dealing with a few locals, I loot the dead heart and collect some meds from the pharmacy. I then chat to the zombie veterans and they're like, you need to go and meet the new guys in town. What a bunch of dorks. They're called the Selective Scavengers and they've set up camp well into plague territory. The house hunters are also looking for assistance, but who gives a fuck about them? And rather surprisingly, I make the treacherous trip across town without blowing up my pickup. I introduce myself to their leader, Heather, and she seems lovely. Although they do seem weirdly proud of the sacks of mysterious meat they're selling. And it's like, boy, for love of God, stay humble, will you? We've all ate at McDonald's. We then decide to stretch our legs for a bit and climb a nearby cell tower. And after a quick scout about, I find some firecrackers and decide it would be really funny to prank our new friends. I can then get out of there giggling at how hilarious I am. Unfortunately, one of our outposts have become infested, so I've got to sort that out. But on the way past, I decide to push my luck and try to loot the auto shop in the nearby town. I find a toolkit no problems, but unfortunately don't get the chance to repair the pickup. I then get caught slipping while browsing the menus. Oh god, not ideal. No, that most definitely isn't ideal. Oh man! The car then detonates, but the explosion gratefully doesn't attract a nearby horde. So I can quickly repair it, then head to my infested outpost, which goes well. Oh Jesus Christ! A Molly clears the infestation, but I'm not best pleased. Fucking hell, come on. That is some bullshit there. Well, I think it's probably time to head back to base. But first, I decide to pay a visit to my friends, and I'm glad I did, as they had a toolkit for sale. They also wanted a hand-moving base, and I'm like, yeah, alright, I'll see what I can do. But for now, I drift back to base and unload my goodies, before taking over as Hastings, who's chilling in the brewery. And Hastings has some retribution to earn. She was made to look like a proper mug by those two player guards and all their feral friends. It's time for some revenge. But first, she decides to clear out a new base for the snack scavengers, which she does by simply not even entering the building. What can I say is a special ability when you can clear a room without even entering it. But now I do have to deal with an unfortunate crackhead. Which of course I do, but at what cost? Shit. And seeing as I'm here, I also decide to take out a siege site. Let's be honest, the last thing I want right now is my base being overrun with the undead and everybody dying horrifically. <laughs> 
<laughs> and with that, it's time to head back to the play cart. And you'll be glad to know this time I brought my strategic cap and I'll be parking appropriately. But it's fair to say we don't get off to a great start. Oh no, Jesus Christ! So I set everything on fire as I escape, then get jumped by another crackhead. I suppose that's the joys of fighting a play cart that's right next to an infestation. But I'll always take that loot, thank you very much, my friend. Then unfortunately a bloat that pops in my face and everything goes horribly. Oh my god, no! That bite just reduces my play count down even more. But gratefully we managed to escape. That is until Hastings collapsed. No! No! Not like this! No! Hastings! Get the fuck up! If anyone tells you button bashing doesn't work, they're lying to you because I hit that button harder than an MMA fight that hits their misses. Oh my god. What the absolute shit? What the fuck was that? Well, I think the comment section will probably describe it as a skill issue, but let's face it, we all know the truth. The zombies are just dirty, cheating stream snipers. The hordes as well as another crackhead push me further and further away from the play cart. So once I've dealt with Susan the method, I adjust tactics and attack the second heart. Thankfully, I get a bit more time than I was expecting and actually complete the first phase. Now back to the other one, and we're gonna do that repeatedly until it's dead. Oh, there's a juggy boy. He better not touch my car, I swear to God. I've only just repaired it. Thankfully, for now, at least he's not interested in my vehicle. He's just banging on the front door like his missus has kicked him out. So I go back to heavy hitting, but once again get caught short. Oh, you twat. But rather surprisingly, the hordes take a little while to catch me, so I do plenty of damage, but don't quite complete the phase before I have to drop out. Yeah, probably- oh god, was that a bloater? It was! How did that bloat and not pop? I have no idea. I then pop a crackhead from distance before having to run from two juggernauts. But at least juggernauts can't enter the building, so I run back in and start battering. But at least I would if I didn't get interrupted by yet another crackhead. I can again deal with it before having to do more damage to the heart, but I get overwhelmed pretty quickly and have to retreat back to the other. But on the short 100 meter trek, guess what? I've got to deal with another crackhead. Honestly, I think I might have faced less ferals when I completed the entire game when all of the zombies were blood ferals. And that was actually a really good video. I really enjoyed it. Go check it out if you haven't done so already. I go back into the warehouse and get a good four or five heavy hits in before the hordes catch up to me. Then I make the mistake of setting fire to my escape route. Ah, well, it doesn't matter. The eyebrows hadn't grown back from the last time Hastings had burned herself. With the hordes out of control, I decide to retreat back, and I still don't get a chance to phase this play cart, but it's got to be getting close. As the room gets overpopulated, I drop a molly and dip. I decide now's a good time to go and attack the other heart. First, I've got to clear the room, but I don't get much time with the heart as I'm interrupted once again by a mother fucking blood feral. I lead it into the open before dropping it, but as I'm dealing with a screamer, disaster strikes. Don't think so. Oh, no! So I use up my final cure, but when I inevitably get bit again, it's time for a tactical retreat as I'm completely out of healables. And also dying out of my arse. So we get back to base, take a medit kit, and sort out our infection with infection therapy before stocking up the resources and getting back out there. And this time I park up even more strategically. I then run in and kill the heart with three more heavy swings, which means I've missed both times when this heart has failed. You wouldn't believe this is actually my full-time job. What a bloody moron. Time to get back to the other heart. And providing I've counted correctly, this should have two phases remaining. I get a few more heavy swings in before having to fight off a plague feral, which results in Hastings being thrown around like a ragdoll, and it's like, Christ's sake, but at least buy me dinner first. It's weird to say I then go a bit mental, blasting with my rifle, dropping multiple mollies before having to tactically throw myself out of the window. I lead the hordes to the billboard and climb on up, before throwing myself off and charging back in. And after many, many more hits, we finally complete the second phase. Just one more phase remaining. So I try to lure them all away from the play cart, which works pretty well for the most part, but unfortunately there's always a few dickheads loitering about. Well, it's a good thing Hastings has the quickest fingers in the apocalypse. I guess that's what happens when you've been single for such a long time. I trade blows, set everything on fire, but eventually the heart falls. And with that, we can head back after a successful day. Two more black hearts are down, bringing our total up to 19 out of the 72. We have a pickup full of loot from the hearts, and now we can relax and enjoy the victory, if only that were true. Once back, we swapped to Stuart, and I'm just glad we had time to grab some resources. Because what comes next will send shivers down your spine. She goes to investigate some noise coming around back, and she's horrified by what she discovers. Juggernaut's in the base, ladies and gentlemen. Juggernaut's in the base. But there's not just one Juggernaut, there's a horde of them. Thinking on my feet, I grab a 50 cal from the supply locker. It might only have three bullets, but it's better than nothing. And while working as a team, we can quickly deal with the first Juggernaut, but there are at least three more bashing through our back doors. I put my two remaining rounds into another jug from across the base before switching to my second surprise, the motherfucking grenade launcher, baby. But unfortunately, that was the only round I had, which is a shame as a second horde led by a crackhead is also penetrating our perimeter. So I grab my final eight mollies and get that burning. I know what you're gonna say. Oh, they don't do anything. Oh god, there's no ammo in that. Right, that's not good. Get the jugs, get the jugs. The jugs are the major thing right now. Thankfully, the majority of the team are packing heavy weaponry and can make the big boys drop a knee. And that's when I make our first horror 
horrifying discovery. Oh no, someone's dead. It didn't pop up, but someone is dead. I can see it on the thing. Who is dead? Shannon is the first to go, but sadly not the last. Rachel has also contracted blood plague, but that's not where the bad news stops. No, not Hastings as well. Hastings had been a vital member of the team. Maneuvering between her and Stuart was the only reason we've made it this far. She survived an entire map of blood ferals, but couldn't survive no man's land. Rest well, queen. You most definitely deserve it. I wish I could say this is where the bloodshed stops, but it's only just beginning. Rachel has now succumbed to her infection, leaving just Stuart and Bootleg to carry on. But being so close to blood plague, there's only one thing Stuart can do, and that's abandon her remaining ally. Making her way to the fire station, which thankfully still has landmines active. And unfortunately, Bootleg was never seen again, but I'm assuming he made for a tasty treat for a juggernaut. And with the undead still festering in her home, the best way Stuart has to deal with them is to lure them all to the outpost and let the landmines deal with them. But with them cleared, she is now one lonely girl. The community is all but finished and her mission is in tatters. Although perhaps not all hope is lost. With an excessive amount of prestige, she pleads with her red talon overlords for their assistance. Their reply is cold, calculated, but unexpected. She's told she has a single hour, and for every single black heart she takes down, she will be granted one new recruit. Clock's ticking, Stuart. Better get to it.